Hello. In this video, I will talk about CM monitoring with Prometheus and Grafana. Monitoring is a very important aspect when it comes to operating software in production. It gives valuable insights about what is happening in our system and how the software is behaving in a production environment. EFM offers real-time monitoring. Time series metrics can be exported to several storages. The recommended storage is Prometheus. Prometheus integrates well with Grafana for time series metrics visualization. With Prometheus and Grafana, you can store and visualize metrics for CEM. First, we will need an environment to monitor. I have already set up an EFM server with one MinIFI agent hard beating. Please refer to the official documentation to get more details on setting up EFM and MinIFI. You can see here EFM UI, which means EFM is up and running. And also we can see one agent class with one agent hard beating and the state of the agent is good. Before we move forward, let's take a look at EFM configuration file, EFM.properties. EFM is already configured to export met metrics to Prometheus by setting this parameter to true. By default, it is set to true. Also, for setting up Grafana integration, you will have to uncomment these two properties, which are commented by default, and you will also need to change the value of this parameter to Grafana's correct hostname and port, which in my case is localhost and 3000. Okay. As the next step, we will need to set up Prometheus. We will install Prometheus on a host that has network connectivity to EFM, which is, in this case, is a local host. You can download Prometheus from the official site, which is prometheus.io slash download. I have already downloaded the binary and uncompressed it into my local file system, as you can see here. To set up Prometheus and DFM integration, we need to add job config in the Prometheus config file scrape config section. So for this, I will open Prometheus.yama. Navigate to the scrape config section. Here you can see there is already one job defined by default. We can ignore this. And let's add the new job config. I have prepared this piece of code and I will copy paste it. And uh, let me quickly explain the details. So the most important property here is the targets. You, you will need to set up the EFM hostname and the EFM port, which is EFM listening on. If you go with default configurations for the API, you won't have to change this property. So let's save this configuration and let's try to start Prometheus. If we did everything fine, Prometheus should start without any errors. To validate that everything works correctly, let's open Prometheus in the UI in the browser. We can do this by opening uh, it on its default port, which is 9090. And Prometheus UI has loaded. To verify EFM integration is correct, let's type EFM in the search bar, and lots of EFM metrics should be li listed. That means that Prometheus has successfully connected to EFM. Okay, let's go to the next step. In the next step, we will download the official EFM dashboards from GitHub. Navigate to uh, this address, github.com slash cloudera slash cloudera hyphen edge hyphen management. When it comes to download, you can choose between checking out the whole repository or just download the files one by one. I have already downloaded files, the dashboard configuration files to my local file system to this directory, and you can see the uh, files here present in this directory. We will use these dashboard definitions in the next step when we will set up Grafana. Now let's move forward with downloading Grafana. You can download Grafana from the official uh, site, which is grafana.com slash grafana slash download. I have already downloaded the binary and uncompressed, as you can see here. There are two things uh, which need to be configured for Grafana to uh, set up the correct integration. The first is we need to define the data source between uh, Grafana and Prometheus. For need, for this, uh, we will add 
or set up data source configuration files. So we will need to create a new file. I will call it EFM data source YAML. This file is located in Grafana's directory slash count slash provisioning slash data sources. I have already prepared a data source definition file. I will copy paste the content here and I will explain the details. So this is how it looks like. The only property you likely need to change is the URL. This should point to the Prometheus installment, which in our case is localhost and Prometheus license on port 9090. I don't have security set up, so I can save this file. And we can move to the second step. Now we need to add a dashboard configuration file, which will point to the uh, dashboard definition files, which we have downloaded in the previous step. So now I will define dashboard definition file. So the path is almost the same. The file is located in the conf directory slash provisioning slash dashboards. And I will create a new file here, which is called EFM dashboards.yaml. I have also prepared dashboard definition file. So I will copy paste it here. The only property you need to change is the options that path. You have to set the same directory where you have downloaded the dashboard definitions in the previous step. So in my case, this is users at each monitoring dashboards. So I set users at each monitoring dashboards here. Now I can save the file and we can start Grafana. It seems we have done everything correctly because Grafana has started. To validate this, now we will open Grafana UI and it has loaded. First, we will need to check whether the data source, data source is working correctly. So I will go to settings and data sources. We should see EFM Prometheus data source here. And we go inside and scroll down and click on save and test. If it says data source is working, the integration is okay between Grafana and Prometheus. Next, we will check whether the dashboards were loaded correctly. So we click on the dashboards menu and we click on the browse menu item. Here we should see a directory called EFM Prometheus. And if we click on that, we should see three imported dashboards. So it seems for so far, uh, we did everything correctly. Let's have a quick overview of the available dashboards. The first one is EFM. This dashboard, uh, EFM, gives a holistic overview about EFM. Quick Facts contains mostly numeric metrics about uh, the system current state, like the cluster size, agent class count, agent manifest count, agent count, count and so on. We can also see the heartbeat data rate and the active per missing agents rate in, in a specific time range. The next section, EFM details, show metrics about mostly uh, the C2 protocol, like the heartbeat TPS, the acknowledge uh, TPS, the latencies, and also the non success distributions. The next section is Kafka. If Kafka is set up in the environment, we should see the Kafka related metrics there, like the event going to Kafka TPS, the latency, and the successful per failure rate as well. In our case, Kafka is not present in the system, so these panels are empty. The last section in this dashboard is Hazelcast. Hazelcast uh, is EFM's internal in-memory uh, storage and caching agent. So in this dashboard, you can see Hazelcast statistics and you can check about the number of entries stored in a specific type of cache. Okay, the second dashboard is uh, called EFM agent plus. While this uh, dashboard can be opened from Grafana directly, the main purpose is to use it from CEM. So if you remember in the first step, I showed that this link was not working. So now if I click on it again, it should work. Please see the difference between the dashboard opened from EFM and opened from Grafana directly. So the dashboard opened from Grafana has the agent class all, while the dashboard opened from EFM has the agent class filter than the specific agent class where it was opened from. And the purpose of this dashboard is to detail the agent class level metrics. So actually it should be only used from here 
filtering on all agent class is mostly not important, so let's stick with this. Agent class uh, dashboard first section is summary. And here you can see uh, the agent class level metric for the number of agent manifest, how many agent manifest is registered with that agent class, the number of online agents, and the number total number of agents. Here in the upper corner, you can set the agent timeout metric. This is the duration after we consider an agent to be offline. So let's say if an agent didn't heartbeat for 60 seconds, it won't show up in the number of online agent metric. In the heartbeat section, uh, we get information about the heartbeat rate and the heartbeat data lengths over the given period. And now let's switch over to the last dashboard, which is called GVM. This dashboard gives detailed information about GVM level system metrics. It's really useful and helps understanding how the system behaves under production load. You can use it for performance tuning or performance related debug sessions. It is really important that these metrics are instance level. So it means that have a filter for an EFM instance. If you use it in cluster mode, you can choose between instance. If it's non-cluster, like in our case, only one instance is present. In the first section, quick facts, you can see the start time of the GVM and also you can see the uptime. Currently, it has been running for more than 13 hours. In the next section, you can see metrics related to IO. So you can see the IO operations rate, the, the duration, of the HTTP requests, you can see the number of errors and also you can see the thread utilizations in the given period. The next section is GVM memory. You can see the memory consumption of the GVM here, which contains the heap, the off heap, and also the total consumption. And the last section is GVM MISC. All of the other metrics are listed here, like CPU usage, number of threads, the system load, the thread states, the number of logged events, and also, last but not least, the uh, garbage collection post durations. This is a really important matrix because with this, you can see how garbage collection pressures your system. If you can see high poses that can indicate that the allocated memory is smaller than the optimal. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this presentation. Thank you for watching this video.